Hi, I'm Ryan, and this is Violet. Today I'm going to show you how I made this wooden shape so it will work. With Christmas fast approaching, I had to decide on what I was going to get for my daughter and nephew. My sister mentioned that she liked traditional wooden toys, so I came up with the idea of making shape sorter. I designed the box in pieces with SketchUp, which was definitely a learning experience. It's not a difficult program to use, I just had to Google how to do a lot of things. For my design, I printed off templates, which would make cutting out the pieces and sides of the box pretty easy. I rough cut the sides of the box with a handsaw. I could have used a circular saw to do this, but I like to use hand tools whenever possible. Main reason is to avoid creating a lot of dust, as I do my woodworking in the basement of our apartment, which is also used for storage and laundry. The wood I'm using is aspen. I had never used it before, but it turned out to be very easy to work with. I roughly cut out the template and glued it on with a glue stick. You could use spray adhesive, but the glue stick works surprisingly well and is easier to remove. I got this tip from Matthias Wandel. Next I drilled a hole for the scroll saw blade to fit through in each side. When cutting out the holes, I cut outside of the line. Then when cutting out the blocks, I cut inside of the line, so the blocks would fit through the holes easily. Some of the blocks ended up being pretty tight, so next time I would cut the holes even a little bigger. On the sides, I cut outside the lines on the outer edges, and inside the lines on the cutout area. Basically, I made them with a slightly sloppy fit to make assembly easier. I didn't want to spend a lot of time tweaking each side to get them to fit together, and for this project, having small gaps between the sides wouldn't matter. Next I used a small brush to apply glue on one side of all the mating surfaces and put the sides together. I was sparing with the amount of glue I used as I wanted to avoid squeeze out. After the glue dried, I used my hand plane to flush all the surfaces. Then I used a random orbital sander to really smooth the sides. With an aggressive grid, it's easy to remove excess material quickly, so I probably could have skipped the hand planing altogether. I cut out one of each of the blocks using the templates, making sure to cut on the inside of the lines. Then I scraped and sanded off the template and glue and refined the shape of each block. I traced these pieces, trying to fit them as closely together as possible to avoid wasting wood. I could have glued on templates for all the pieces, but I wanted to avoid the extra step of scraping and sanding off the template. There are five shapes, and I made five of each, so I ended up with 25 pieces in total. In my revised plans, I have six shapes, one for each side. I think as many as 36 pieces would fit in the box, so you could make six colors of each shape. Next, I sanded the boxes and all the pieces. This was a bit time consuming and tedious to do by hand. A disc or belt sander would have made the process much quicker. Then I wiped everything down with denatured alcohol to remove most of the dust and debris. I wanted the pieces to be a variety of colors, but also wanted whatever dye or stain I used to be non-toxic, since I knew my daughter would be trying to eat the pieces. I bought some food coloring and mixed it with shellac. This worked okay, but not great. It turns out that the food coloring doesn't mix well with shellac. The coloring tends to separate out and fall to the bottom. This meant that I had to use a lot of the coloring, almost all of each bottle, to get a fairly intense color. Also, some color combinations didn't work correctly. I tried to make purple by mixing red and blue, and ended up with a gray-brown color. Next time I use food coloring, I'll just mix it with water. I applied one coat of the dye shellac mixture and one coat of straight shellac. This looked nice, but I found out that one coat of shellac was not enough to lock in the color. When I gave the pieces to my daughter to try out, she immediately started chewing on a red piece, resulting in her hands and face turning red. So I applied more coats by dipping the pieces in shellac. After three more coats, color would still come off on some pieces, especially on the end grain. In total, I applied six coats. I don't think so many coats would have been necessary if I had mixed the food coloring with water. I think mixing it with shellac resulted in the coloring mostly staying on the surface rather than soaking in. Also, a smoother surface, especially on the end grain, would have helped, so next time I would be more thorough in my sanding. I made this screw board to dry the pieces on, which worked really well. It was simple to make and I made a short video showing the process. I actually ended up making the lids for the boxes twice. My original idea was to make a hinged lid. It worked fine, but when I gave the box to my daughter, I found out that when she would pull the box toward her, the lid would hit her right in the face. So I removed the lids, trying not to damage the boxes. 
On one box I was successful, on the other I damaged one side slightly. It wasn't very noticeable, especially after I applied finish. I made new lids, this time using magnets to hold them on. I carefully drilled matching holes in the boxes and lids. The depth of the holes was important, so I really took my time. I wanted the magnets to just barely protrude from the surface so that when the lid was put on, the magnets would make direct contact with each other. I carefully laid out the magnets before starting the glue up. The magnets have one side which is smooth and the other has a small dimple to make identifying the positive and negative sides easy. Making sure that all the magnets on the lid had one polarity facing down and all the magnets on the box had the opposite polarity facing up was really important. I knew that if I messed this up, it would be a real pain to fix. I used 5 minute epoxy to glue in the magnets. As it turns out, when they say 5 minute epoxy, they really mean 5 minutes. The first batch I mixed up set up when I was about halfway through gluing the magnets in. So I had to run to the hardware store and buy another tube. The second time I mixed up a much smaller batch. You don't need much as the magnets fit in the holes tightly. It's hard to see, but before I drilled the holes, I put masking tape on all the spots where I would be drilling so that when I epoxied in the magnets, I could catch any squeeze out on the tape and remove it before the epoxy cured. I had already applied shellac to the lids and boxes, so this was the last step. Pilot really likes the shape sorter. I've done a few woodworking projects, but I'd say this is the one that gives me the most satisfaction. There's nothing quite like seeing your child have fun with something you made for them. Click here to download the plans, and if you like this video, click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Take care.